Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Bahamas gets a new prime minister after a landslide victory by the Free National Movement. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Thursday, May 11. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Voters in the Bahamas sent a clear signal to former Prime Minister Perry Christie and his progressive Liberal Party, the PLP, sweeping them out of office and giving Hubert Minnis Free National Movement, the FNM, a landslide victory in Wednesday's elections. The final results are not yet out, but it's projected the FNM will take 35 seats in Parliament to the PLP's four. In what has been described as the worst defeat of a ruling party in the country's modern political history, Christie lost his seat in the constituency that he had represented for decades. Among the other PLP casualties were former Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell, former Minister of Tourism Obadiah Wilchcombe, and former Minister of Labour Shane Gibson. However, Minnis easily won his seat, and shortly before 10 o'clock last night, Christie called him and conceded defeat. In a statement issued after that call, Christie said, and I quote, I understand, as perhaps few others, the challenges that await Dr. Minnis, and I wish him only success on behalf of our, na of our nation. He has my full support for a smooth transition, end of quote. In his victory speech, Minnis said it was a long-fought battle, but he was ready to do the people's bidding. I am fully aware of the awesome mandate that has been handed to me and to my colleagues. There are serious challenges that lay ahead, but we are confident that with God's help and with the hard work, we shall overcome. As we go about the business of governing, we ask for God's help. That he protect us from the sins of arrogance and greed. That he keeps us ever mindful that this new day is not about us, but about the people we have to honor to serve. Dr. Minnis was initially scheduled to be sworn in as Prime Minister at 5 p.m. on Thursday, but that was later pushed back to 7 p.m. Well, over on the Grand Bahamas, celebrations by FNM supporters are said to have lasted into the wee hours of Thursday morning. Sabrina Brown of ZNS Network News has the details. The Free National Movement celebrating a major victory on Grand Bahama following the 2017 general election. The party taking all five seats on the island, the second time the FNM has made a clean sweep in the nation's second city. The FNM running away with the West Grand Bahama and Bimini seat only the second time since 1997. And for the first time, Grand Bahama has delivered the country's Deputy Prime Minister, Peter Turnquest of the East Grand Bahama constituency. I want to thank each and every one of you for your act of courage, your strength, your encouragement and your prayers. Over the last five years, we have suffered a lot of setbacks. We've had a lot of ground to cover. But by the grace of God and with your support and your prayers, here we are today. 
celebrating this great, great, grand victory. FNM supporters gathered at a social affair convention center for a victory celebration Wednesday night. Michael Pintard will represent Marco City. Iram Lewis is the new representative for Central Grand Bahama. Lakeisha Parker Edgecombe is the first female to represent West Grand Bahama and Bimini. And Frederick McElpine in Pine Ridge. The MPs elect said thank you to their loyal supporters and they vowed to get down to the business of the people. I'm appealing to landlords to have just a little bit more patience with the tenant you are about to throw out. I'm appealing to the banks, to the mortgage corporation, to rewrite the loans that people have so that the rates are lower even if the terms are longer. I'm appealing and demanding of the poor that we re-look at the licensing fees so that those that are on the brink can survive. It is scared for us that this is going to be a short-lived honeymoon. Work will begin as soon as possible. Our deputy leader is the go-getter. Our newly prime minister-to-be is the go-getter. The free national movement knew that it was the people's time, and you indicated just how much power the people have. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Prayers were lifted for the nation and the newly elected members of parliament as they chart a new course for the country. You made a change in this country and so we lift our hands to glory and say, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Meanwhile, one of the PLP spokespersons, Norris Bain, says the party has accepted the loss and he believes it is the will of God. Should this council agree to a meeting without a clear understanding of its outcomes, we will do nothing but prepare the ground for disagreement and discord. and Pakisha Parker Edgecombe in West Grand Bahama and Bimini. The PLP standard bearer for Marco City, Norris Bain, says that despite their losses, the PLP fought a good fight and is congratulating the new and unofficial government. Congratulations to the Free National Movement, who unofficially say like they're going to be the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the new Prime Minister. It's been a wonderful experience, and I just want to say thank you to the thousands of residents of the residents of Marco City that gave me the privilege to enter the doors of their home and to share my vision and plan for um, for the constituency of Marco City. However, the people decided that that's, that was not the direction they wanted to go and, and decided to go with um, the free national movement in this particular case and seemingly throughout the length and the breadth of the Bahamas. Once the unofficial results started coming in, Bain says he realized that the party may have been defeated at the polls, many calling election 2017 a clean sweep. The people of the Bahamas obviously desired a new direction and they voted overwhelmingly for a new direction. And so um, uh, they, they obviously was not pleased with the governance of the Progressive Liberal Party and wanted change, and that's what they what they um, what they voted for tonight. And certainly, the Lord God is in control, and the people are His instruments to carry out His bidding. Daniel 4:17 says that He reigned in the affairs of men, and He put it over at home, so however He will, even the basis of men He puts over His affairs. And so, God knows what He's do what He's doing. He has a purpose. We accept. The results. I know I accept the results. There's nothing you can do about it. And we wish to apologize for the difference in the start of that clip. That was not supposed to be part of that story. In other news, Haiti has been listed as one of the riskiest countries in the world to do business. And this is according to a new study published by property insurance group FM Global based on data from the International Monetary Fund, the World Economic Forum and the World Bank. The country's rank of 130 has been attributed to the deaths of more than 1,000 people when Hurricane Matthew struck a second. That's a section of the country last October. On the other hand, the study found that Switzerland is the safest destination in the world for business. More deaths and anti-government protests in Venezuela. Stay with us.
Welcome to Swiftpack, your online shopping and shipping solution. Receive the best rates, expert cargo management, and exceptional customer service. Swiftpack provides secure handling of your smallest packages to your largest cargo with speed and reliability. We invite you to use our U.S. mailbox service, online shopping, ship air and ocean cargo from the supplier to your door. We handle it all for you. Get started now. Sign up for a free regular account or premium account or give us a call on 440. 6100 Swift back you shop we ship you save the Sajiko Cavehill School of Business and Management invites you to attend Navigating a Path to Growth, a risk and competitive intelligence conference at Hilton Barbados Resort on June 26th and 27th, 2017. Speakers include global strategy and risk expert Dr. Andrea Schotter, regional PwC risk assurance leader Bruce Scott, Miss Lisa Padmore, Dr. Delisle Worrell, Mr. Ian D'Souza, Professor Patrick Hossein, Professor Gillian Marcel, and many others. For more information, call 246-424-7731 or visit www.uwichsb.org. Secure your space today. Chatting Caricom, a four-part series on the status of the regional integration process. Your chance to get answers. We as a small island, how do we factor into that bigger picture? Why is the process taking so long? While there is liberty to move among the islands, we still have some level of restriction. Chatting Caricom also gives you updates on recent Caricom projects. We're seeking more and more to engage um, all our partners in, in moving forward. Uh, for the development of our region. We have come a very long way since we started. Join the Caribbean community and Carib Vision for Chatting Caricom, a community for all. Coming soon. It's another episode when we out on the road. This is what we love to celebrate, to celebrate. This is not Hollywood. No, we don't come out the road. Drink, drink, drink. King Papa and the King Papa. And if I tell a boy, he keep on calling me wrong name. But that's okay, cause that's my baby. Welcome back. Two more lives were lost on Wednesday during opposition protests in Venezuela. One man was killed during demonstrations in Caracas, while another died in the Andean city of Merida after being injured in the protest. Young Venezuelans against President Nicolas Maduro have been staging protests on an almost daily basis, calling for him to step down. Wednesday's protest was characterized by the use of what protesters call Puputov cocktails, bottles containing fecal matter, which they threw at soldiers who used tear gas to block the march. At least 39 people have died in the unrest since early April, including protesters, government sympathizers, bystanders, and security forces. Hundreds have also been hurt and arrested. Meanwhile, Caribbean and Latin American ambassadors to the Organization of American States, the OAS, have called for more thought to be put into the convening of a meeting of foreign ministers to discuss the Venezuela situation. In the regular meeting of the OAS General Council on Wednesday, Antigua and Barbuda's ambassador, Sir Ronald Sanders, urged the council to first settle on the purpose of the meeting. Canada had proposed that the meeting be held on May 22nd, but Sir Ronald said the timing is too short if thoughtful attention is to be given to such a serious matter as the socio-economic and the political situations in Venezuela. There 
that should this council agree to a meeting without a clear understanding of its outcomes, we will do nothing but prepare the ground for disagreement and discord that is unhelpful to the credibility and authority of the OAS. Sir Ronald recommended the establishment of a working group made up of all members of the council to prepare a draft statement to send to foreign ministers ahead of the proposed meeting. The Caribbean diplomat said he is concerned about what he terms the politics of exclusion that appears to be creeping into the organization and fueling division. That division not only weakens our membership, it weakens the authority of this organization. With regard to the date of this proposed meeting and what it is intended to do, many delegations in this council were excluded from those discussions. First time my delegation knew about it was the posting of this notice for this meeting. We remain unaware, Chair, of the intended outcome of this meeting and what it hopes to achieve. Yet, we are asked to blindly support its, convoca its convocation and a date on which to hold it. In what seems to be an unexplained haste to hold a meeting on Venezuela, the ambassador of Grenada, as the ambassadors of Grenada, Guyana, and Suriname were among those agreeing with Serrano's call for a more measured and inclusive approach to the Venezuelan situation. Grenada's ambassador to the OAS, Angus Friday, told the council that a meeting of foreign ministers should be delayed to give sufficient time for its proper planning. Uh, we believe that a meeting of foreign ministers should be solution-oriented and that sufficient time should be given for uh, any outcome that may be envisaged by such a meeting to be solution-oriented uh, as opposed to uh, a meeting that could further uh, fan the flames and actually not uh, result in a peaceful solution uh, in Venezuela. Guyana's ambassador to the OAS is Riyadh in Sinali. He warned the council against appearing to rush to judgment on Venezuela. Be very careful that in hastening to help our friends in Venezuela, we do not appear to be engaged, engaging in an unseemly rush to pass judgment. What is required is a measured approach necessitating our utmost diplomatic skills to help find a solution to the problem confronting the people of Venezuela. Meanwhile, Suriname's ambassador, Nirmala Barraising, is advocating for Venezuela to be given the opportunity to engage in dialogue geared towards a peaceful resolution. The views that have been expressed, and I have, um, um, I have had consultations with uh, my capital, um, the CELAC ministers of foreign affairs have all agreed that Venezuela should be provided the opportunity to start a renewed process of dialogue, and that um, uh, the opportunity should be provided to the country, and that Countries should not um, demonstrate a confrontational uh, approach towards them, but rather be in support of a more peaceful process and that reproachment would be more accepted. Venezuela was absent from Wednesday's meeting, which eventually agreed to defer taking a decision on the date for the ministerial meeting until Monday. Stay with us. In Newsline Sport, Rustin Chase breaks Pakistan's disciplined batting performance on day two of the final test. Stay with us. Sport is next.
Ready. It's another episode. When we out on the road, this is what we love to celebrate, to celebrate. This is not Hollywood. No, we don't come out the road. search of extreme adventure, or a family vacation, or a relaxing getaway. Dominica is fun for everyone. And a place where you can totally disconnect and enjoy paradise. Discover Dominica, the nature island. Welcome to Swiftback your online shopping and shipping solution. Receive the best rates, expert cargo management, and exceptional customer service. Swiftpack provides secure handling of your smallest packages to your largest cargo with speed and reliability. We invite you to use our U.S. mailbox service, online shopping, ship air and ocean cargo from the supplier to your door. We handle it all for you. Get started now. Sign up for a free regular account or premium account or give us a call on 440-6100. Swift back. You shop, we ship, you save. Rostin Chase broke what has been a disciplined batting performance by Pakistan on Thursday, picking up four wickets on the second day of the third and final test in Dominica. After resuming from a lunchtime position of two and that's two twenty seven for three, the visitors folded on three seventy that's 376. Captain Mishba Ulahak fell in the last over on 59 before T to give part time off spinner chase his fourth wicket. Shafraz Ahmed also scored a half century. The rest of the lower order could only muster single digits. West Indies will return on Friday on 14 without loss. Here are the highlights of the second day of play. Session. It was Shafraz initially who looked crafty and Created few shots. West Indies went for a review against Mohammad Amir. There's a little bit of doubt whether the ball hit the bat first or the bat, but uh, the decision went in favor of Pakistan when it showed that the ball would have gone on to miss the stumps. It took West Indies by surprise, and this time it was Mohammad Amir who was taken out by Jason Holder, and of the very next ball had Yasser Shah edging it to first lift. Stunt miss. And, uh, Safraz by that time had decided that he's going to improvise and go for shots. In favor that uh, that area quite regularly over the slip score. Oh, Appeal from West Indies. They took a review and showed as Paul hitting the bat. put life back into the innings with uh, a very finely paced and played 50. In the end, he was out to Bishop. Very good catch in the slips. And then the last man was dismissed. A couple of good blows from Hassan Ali. And then the innings ended when Abbas was stumped. They started the fun, started the show. They took the small roller. Paul misbehaved, not a lot. This was this was thought of being reviewed. Pakistan didn't, didn't go for a review, and the pitch is powdering up. There's a bit of inconsistent bounce as well. But Wesley's real test will begin tomorrow against Yasser Shah, and whether Pakistan can get a bit of reverse. 
Staying with cricket, West Indies cricket legend Brian Lara says the opening of the cricket academy bearing his name is a dream come true. The cricket legend was speaking at a press conference at his residence on Thursday ahead of the opening of the billion-dollar Taruba facility. While he appreciated the accolades for his achievement in West Indies cricket over the years, Lara said the development of young cricketers was the legacy he wants to leave behind. It has been 13 years since I got the call from the office of the Prime Minister. I walked down the hill, I met, and I met with our late Prime Minister, Patrick Manning, on the occasion of regaining the world record by scoring 400 not out. I was adamant that I wanted nothing on a personal level, but something that would leave a legacy marking the achievement. This country has given me too much already the love and the support, the tangibles and the intangibles. I'm truly grateful and still am. I felt that young cricketers, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the Caribbean, needed better facilities and a place where they can advance their skills, both sporting and academically, in the right environment. Today, we are on our way to completing this dream. Since its inception, the stadium has been married in controversy. The fact that it could not be finished on time to stage matches for the Cricket World Cup drew the ire of many. Then there was the issue of cost overruns. The latest controversy surrounded the proposal that one of the stands bear the name of an Indian cricket legend. But Lara said naming the stand has nothing to do with honoring the renowned cricketer. Today, I didn't feel that we were honoring anybody by putting their name on a stand. I felt that we were using them once more, not for my benefit, but for the benefit of all young cricketers around the world. For parents who may not understand the part they have to play in their young ones' lives. For those who have done great things, but yet are unwilling to share their experiences with others, for them to learn what it takes to succeed on their chosen path. For young sportsmen to understand how to play fierce but fair, and how to accept all eventualities, all outcomes, and to be, and be it success or failure, treat them both the same, with humility and compassion for all that participated. And stay tuned to Carib Vision after Caribbean Newsline on Friday evening because we'll be carrying the opening of the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. So that's Friday evening, 7 p.m. Stay tuned to Carib Vision. That's the sport. We'll be right back. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. It's not about exercising. It's having the strength to do what you're passionate about. It's not about the road traveled. It's about the one to be traveled. An important thing in life is finding the perfect balance between body and soul. With a bottle of Ensure, you get the proteins, calcium, and 26 vitamins and minerals your body needs to live the best moments of your life with strength and energy. Your life, your health, your Ensure. And that's Caribbean Newsline from all of us at CMC News. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a good night.